Okay, in this uh, section we're going to talk about trig functions of any angle. So this is the third way to think about trig functions. But it really helps if you can tie them all together. It really is the same idea. We're looking at it from three different perspectives. Let's see, we started off talking about the unit circle. We didn't talk about angles at all, did we? You, you started at 1, 0, you marched around t units, and we defined the six trig functions in terms of this point x, p of x, y, where you end up, right? For example, the cosine of t was x and the sine of t was y. Then when we started talking about angles, we define radian measure, and what's so nice about the unit circle, if you're on the unit circle, the radian measure of this central angle in radians equals the distance that you move around the unit circle. That's important because that ties together the notions of trigonometric functions of a real number t with trigonometric functions of an angle. Okay, then we talked about right triangle trig. And that's really kind of a special case of what we were just looking at. Uh, when, you're a right, when you have a right triangle, this angle theta is an acute angle. It's, it's between uh, 0 and 90 degrees, or 0 and pi over 2. So if you think about that in the first quadrant, remember we defined, for example, the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be y over r. But it turns out this big triangle is similar to this small triangle on the unit circle. And what's so, what's so important about that is when you have similar triangles, the... Um, ratios of corresponding sides are equal. What does that mean? That means that uh, the, ratio, the, the sine of theta equals y over r, but y over r is equal to the y-coordinate of this point divided by 1. So y over r equals the y-coordinate on the unit circle divided by 1. So in other words, the definition is consistent with what we talked about on the unit circle. And the idea of similar triangles is really important because if you have similar triangles, since the ratios of corresponding sides are equal, that says that if you have an angle theta, you can pick any point on the terminal side. Uh, if you think about this big triangle is similar to the small one, so if, you can pick any point on the terminal side of theta and, and the, the trig functions will always be the same. The only thing that matters is the angle, not the point. Alright, so that's, that's exactly what we're doing, doing now, is we're saying, okay, let's suppose you have an angle theta in standard position, and uh, the one I drew here is in the second quadrant. Suppose p of x, y is any point on the terminal side of theta. Then this is how we define well, the x-coordinate is here, the y-coordinate is here. We first of all could compute r. r is, think of that as the hypotenuse. r is the square root of um, x squared plus y squared, and r is always positive. And we define the trig functions like this. The, uh, the sine of theta is y over, uh, I should say y over r, right? Cosine of theta is x over r. Tangent of theta is y over x. Again, don't think of this as really any different because this big triangle is similar to this small triangle on the unit circle, right? So when, when, when the sine of theta equals y over r by similar triangles, y over r equals the y-coordinate of this point divided by 1. So it, it is consistent with, uh, with what we were talking about earlier. All you need, what, what this basically says is all you need to find the trig functions of an angle is a point on the terminal side which is what we have here. Suppose you're given a point on the terminal side, negative 3, comma 2. So how would you find the six trig functions of theta? Well, I'll tell you, the best advice I can give you is to draw a picture. Always draw a picture. Uh, if, if, if negative 3, 2 lies on the terminal side of theta, it looks like you're in the second quadrant. Now, by the way, theta does not have to be a positive angle. I've drawn it so it looks like a positive angle here. It could be any, it could be, it doesn't make any difference how you got there. All that matters is, the, is where you end up. And so, uh, once you know the point is negative 3, 2, you have to first compute r. Remember, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. r is always positive, so you get 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. So then you get r is the square, positive square root of 13. Now that you know x, you know y, you know r, you can compute the six trig functions, you see. The sine of theta is y over r, so it would be 2 over uh, square root of 13. The cosine of theta is uh, x over r, so it becomes negative 3 over square root of 13. And the tangent's y over x, so it'd be 2 over negative 3, or negative 2 thirds. And then the other three are just the reciprocals of the first three. Okay, so the key idea here, again, is that you can pick any point you want on the terminal side of theta. So if you want to find the six trig functions of where theta equals 5 pi over 3, why not use the unit circle? You've already studied it, why not use the unit, unit circle? I'm picking this point right here. Uh, uh, 5 pi over 3 
moves us into the fourth quadrant and so this reference angle is pi over 3 but in terms of reference point it's this point we used in the first quadrant uh, the pi over 3 so you have to adjust for the sine x coordinates 1 half y coordinates negative radical 3 over 2 and what's nice about the unit circle of course is when you compute r it's 1 alright so here, this is how we do it so the sine is the y coordinate over r which is just negative radical 3 over 2 the cosine is the x coordinate over r which is just 1 half and the tangent is y over x, which becomes negative radical 3. And the other three are just the reciprocals of those. All right, well, how about this angle here? How about negative 210 degrees? Find the six trig functions. Remember what I just said. Well, you can use any point you want on the terminal side. Um, how about sticking with the unit circle again? Locate negative 210 degrees. That means you go clockwise, right? You end up here in the second quadrant. This little angle in here is 30 degrees. So the point I'm going to use on the unit circle out here is going to have the same point as this reference point in the first quadrant, but x is negative, y is positive. So, and uh, r is 1. See, we're on the unit circle, so r is 1. So that's how we get the sine of theta is um, y over r, which would be 1 half over 1. The cosine of theta is x over r. We get negative radical 3 over 2. Tangents, negative 1 over radical 3. And again, the other three are just the reciprocals. Of the first three. Okay, this is this one's a little different. Suppose we have uh, theta that lies on the graph of y equals negative 5x in the fourth quadrant. Notice they don't tell you if theta is a positive angle or a negative angle. It doesn't make any difference. All that matters is, is, is that you can find a point on the terminal side. So the graph looks kind of like this. We're in the fourth quadrant here. We're, we're hoping we to find a point on the terminal side here of y equals negative 5x. Well, can you, can you think of one, uh, an easy point? Um, what if the x-coordinate is 1? Then wouldn't the y-coordinate have to be uh, negative 5? So that means this is 1, this is negative 5. And before we can do anything else, we have to compute r, right? How do you compute r? r squared equals 1 squared plus negative 5 squared. Remember, r is always positive. r becomes the square root of 26. So now you're home free. The sine of theta is the y coordinate over r, so it's negative 5 over square root of 26. X coord uh, uh, the cosine of theta is the x coordinate over r, which would be 1 over square root of 26. Tangent of theta is y over x. I think the common mistake here would be to forget to divide by r, so don't forget to do that. Okay, let's, let's keep on going. This one, suppose secant of theta is 5 and tangent of theta is less than 0. Find the other five trig functions of theta. Well, let's see, what quadrant are we in? If the secant of theta is 5, we know the cosine is the reciprocal, so it has to be 1 fifth. So that would be quadrant 1 or 4. But if the tangent is negative, that means we have to be in quadrant 4, right? So think of this as the cosine is 1 fifth, means the cosine of theta would be x over r. How do you find y? Use the Pythagorean theorem. Well, of course, you draw a picture again. Always draw a picture. Um, how do you find y? Well, 1 squared plus y squared is 5 squared, so y squared is 24. Y is negative the square root of 24 because you're in quadrant number 4, you see? Don't forget the negative sign there. But again, once you, once you have all that information, you're home free. The cosine we already knew was 1 fifth. The sine of theta becomes y over r, so it becomes negative 2 radical 6 over 5. And the tangent of theta is y over x, negative 2 radical 6 over 1. The others are just the reciprocals of those. All right, one last thing here I want to talk about. This is kind of thrown in here. Uh, remember the area of a, of a triangle is one-half base times height, right? Well, using trig, there's a nice way of thinking of it. The way this is drawn, the, the base would be A, the height would be H. But notice, in terms of right triangle trig, sine of theta equals H over B. So that means that H equals um, B sine theta. So A is the base, and the height becomes B sine theta. So th this says that you can find the area of a triangle by multiplying the two sides and, and taking the sine of the angle that's, that's between them. So in this last example, if you wanted to find the um, area of this triangle here with sides 4 and 8 and angle theta 20 degrees, it would be 1 half A times B times sine theta, which comes up to be about 5.5 feet. So that's a nice little formula to keep straight. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.